Hi, uh, greetings from Indo 2022 in Atlanta, Georgia. I'm Mark Newman, the editor of Endocrine News. And this morning's live stream is about the EndoCares program that took place in Clarkston, Georgia, one of the new programs that the Endocrine Society has rebranded. And here to talk with me about that uh, program is Melanie Haynes and Priya Belanca. Belanki, sorry. And okay. I've heard nothing but outstanding rave reviews about the event in Clarkston yesterday. So can, can you tell us a little bit about how it went and uh, what you saw from that and the need for it? Sure, uh, and thank you to the Endocrine Society for this opportunity as well. Um, so we had um, our event in Clarkston, Georgia, which is where most of our immigrant, new immigrant families and refugee families um, are being settled, or settling rather. Um, so it was really nice to see a community that we don't typically see in Atlanta in our clinic. Um, there were over 200 people there um, from various parts of the world um, who actually re, uh, who came together and there were translators um, and it was really attended by even community leaders. The mayor of Clarkston was there oh, wow. actually and so really highlighted how important diabetes care and um, care for hypertension, screening for hypertension was for us anyway. Right, yeah. right. So did it live up to the expectations that you thought it would? Did it exceed the expectations? <laughs> oh, absolutely. I mean, there was a line that was out yes. the door and down the hallway for the real-time healthcare screenings for A1C, BMI, mm -hmm. blood pressure, cholesterol, and people were so interested in being able to talk to a doctor one-on-one -on -one right. after their results, even if the results were normal, just to learn more about like, what does this mean for me and my health? So is this something that once you got there, you thought there might be a need, but once you were in Clarkston, it really sort of mm -hmm. confirmed that fact? Oh, yeah. Um, we've diagnosed, I think, several people with um, diabetes, right. um, new diagnoses, new diagnoses of hypertension. We actually sent two people to the emergency room just highlighting, underscoring uh, need for these screenings. Um, yes, um, we actually called an Uber. Wow. <laughs> so what would have happened had they not gone to the emergency room? Not sure. Um, you know, I talked to one of the community leaders and she actually said this was a person they were talking about um, in their WhatsApp group. A, co a member um, mentioned that there's a person that they know who's in, who doesn't feel well. Right. And they actually told them to come to this fair and to this health fair. And that person was diagnosed with a hypertensive crisis and we sent her to the ER. So, wow, that's that's amazing. So. That's amazing. So what sort of inspired you both to get involved with this program? Yeah, so I am um, on the patient engagement committee of the Endocrine Society. And part of our renewed charges to improve diversity, equity, and inclusion initiatives um, with the Endocrine Society. And that is part of our renewed efforts. So I was interested in participating as the patient uh, engagement committee ambassador to EndoCares to do my small part to help improve access and reduce disparities in underserved communities. And it was just such a, a gratifying experience. Um, I spoke with a woman who's a member of a community organization that works to improve health and well-being through martial arts. And she was explaining that she's really worried about nutrition in the community and was so thankful that not only do we bring educational materials about nutrition, but we brought a nutritionist to do mm -hmm. a talk on healthy eating, and then did a real live demonstration of healthy mm -hmm. cooking right. um, on the stage. So right. she was very thankful. So this seems like it's really benefiting these underserved communities in a way that it would just, it's ballooning. We had no idea how much they would need these sort of things. And now how many people showed up yesterday? Approximately 200. Um, it, is that more than you thought? Um, I think we were, in numbers, we were anticipating that, but in reality, um, we, I think it, we thought it would be less. <laughs> so, um, so yeah, we were really excited about the turnout. It was way more than we expected, uh, that we anticipated. How right, that. <laughs> right, and that's that's always good news. But you yeah. s you spoke a little bit about the immigrant community in mm -hmm. this area. What sort of uh, methods did you have to communicate? So we really, uh, the Endocrine Society was really great about translating into, I think it's five different languages now. Um, not just, you know, we have a lot of material on Spanish, but it's the newer, um, 
the languages of the people that are coming in um, more recently, like Dari and Pashto from um, refugees from Afghanistan, for right. example, uh, Burmese immigrants, Burmese refugees, so Karen and uh, different Burmese dialects as well. So we actually translated those big billboards, put them out in, in the community by highways, by roads, um, and and also word of mouth. Really. Right, right. Um, and my next question was going to be, what was your favorite part of the program? But if you save lives, yeah. that's got to be right up there. <laughs> yes. Yeah, I, I really enjoyed just talking yeah. with people, talking with people in the community, uh, community organizations, our, our own colleagues. Um, yeah. We had a shuttle going out to Clarkston right. from um, the Endocrine Society. So it was great to see Endocrine Society members there volunteering and, and mm -hmm. donating their time on on the first big day right. of uh, Endocrine Society, they decided to come and, and lend a hand in community outreach in, instead. So it was really great to see. And so this is not the first event, right? We had one in Seattle recently. Yes, there was one in Seattle. This is our, our flagship event. The right. flagship EndoCares will be at Endocrine Society every year. Um, but we have events upcoming in Phoenix and, and Baltimore as well. Um, so if anyone is, is interested in becoming a host city or donating their time for a talk or, um, mm -hmm. uh, please feel free to reach out to the patient engagement committee because we would love to get more, uh, cities involved. That sounds fantastic. I mean, the fact that just this, uh, program has saved lives at its flagship event, mm -hmm. I think that says a lot for the value and the need for this in the communities. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, I also think, um, you know, I work at a safety net hospital uh -huh. in Atlanta, and uh, we see mainly the underserved and underinsured patients. That's a majority of our population. Right. But even to me, it really, I think this event highlighted the barriers that people have that new immigrants and refugees and even, you know, just their community has to even access to get into our door. Absolutely. And I think... A, and I think it also highlights a role for us physicians to think beyond our clinic. Right. And, you know, because most of care happens before they come to our office and after they come to our office and in their communities. So, um, and I run the section at Grady Memorial Hospital, um, the endocrinology section, and I think it really opened my eyes as to planning new programs. Right, um, right. And how to go about doing that and thinking more long term. Um, on how we can better get access to diabetes care, hypertension, um, um, these, anyway. Th uh, well, it's all about the access yeah, exactly. and the education for patients, <laughs> right. especially, especially in yeah. these underserved populations. And it really shows, it indicates how important these health disparities are mm -hmm. in these various communities. Absolutely. And one of the things that we're thinking about is making sure that this is not individuals only interactions with the healthcare mm -hmm. system, that we're really using this as a, a first interaction of many. So there were healthcare plans, there mm -hmm. were clinics on site, including Grady, to make sure that um, individuals could get connected with the healthcare system. Mm -hmm. right. um, and we're trying to think of ways to actually be able to measure that, determine that the metrics to be able to confirm that we're actually changing healthcare behaviors in the community and improving long-term health. Right. Well, this this is such an important program that the Endocrine Society yeah. does, and it's just it's yeah. been a phenomenal <laughs> success so far. So, congratulations yeah. on that. Uh, the buzz has <laughs> the buzz has been palpable here at Endo 2022. I can tell you, people are excited about how well it went. So, uh, thank you very much for yeah. being here and. Thank you for tuning in to Endo 2022, and this will be on our website. Thank you very much.